time to look at one of my favourite uh, sea creatures, which is the horseshoe crab. I love it because it looks prehistoric. It looks like a combination of all things cool. It looks like an armor-plated stingray. It looks like a crab. It looks like the face hugger out of Alien. It's got everything cool going for it. I'm the snake artist and I draw some of the most beautiful animals in the world. When I don't use photos, I don't always get the best sketch. But I love doing this and I want to share it with you. So come along on the adventure as I fill my journal with some of the most amazing wildlife. I was lucky enough to go to the aquarium at St. Louis and here we saw a horseshoe crab. Not only did I see one, I actually got to feed one. Uh, saw this thing eat. It eats with its feet. And when you look at the underside, it does look like something from one of those alien films. So the thing about horseshoe crabs is that they are ancient in that they, yes, they do look like a fossil. They do look a bit like a trilobite. In 2008, they discovered one that they date to be 445 million years old. The world's oldest known horseshoe crab. And the cool thing about horseshoe crabs is they still sort of resemble those prehistoric horseshoe crabs. So they haven't really changed much. They're like living fossils. But they're not actually crabs. In fact, they're not even crustaceans. They don't have antennae. They're probably even more closely related to things like spiders. It's probably more like an arachnid that sort of floats around the water. Well, that's not actually an arachnid either. It's just a very unique animal. And it's very interesting when you look at the array of different sensory organs this thing has. With the eyes, it has medial eyes, compound eyes, lateral eyes, ventral eyes. It's got sort of eyes all over it. It looks like they have two big main eyes, which is the compound eyes, the other ones you see, but these other little dots, they're also eyes. These, these smaller, tiny little eyes, they pretty much just pick up on light source. Photoreceptors. Now the spiked tail, this is what makes it look gnarly, it makes it look like an armor-plated stingray. People used to think that it stung people. But it's usually used as a rudder and sometimes if it gets stuck on its back, it can use it to flip itself up the right way. I can hear kookaburras in the background while I'm drawing this, uh, this thing. Which is hardly sort of relevant. So the adults mostly eat bivalves, they're, they're like clams, like uh, shell, shellfish that have two parts to them. And this is where like they mash their food up with their legs. They've got these tiny little spiky upper regions to their legs which they sort of mash up their food. So their, their inner legs kind of act like teeth. So in some parts of the world they sort of come up en masse on the shorelines to breed. And this is often where they are picked up by people to use for medical science. If you're under 40 and you've been vaccinated, you can probably thank the horseshoe crab. And so they use the blood. The blood is very different. It's blue blood. And what makes it blue is that uh, it's different from ours. Our blood's iron-based, which is a hemoglobin which transports oxygen around the body, but the horseshoe crab, uh, theirs is based on copper, which is a bluish tinge. And that's called hemocycin. And so here's the deal. One of the problems is that if we're using this natural resource for medical science, a lot of these animals are being caught, one third of their blood is being taken, and yet they are finding that a lot of these guys, they thought they were surviving, but they're not. They're slowly dying out. This puts this animal into the category of being a vulnerable species. Now, it's not just medical harvesting. There's other factors as well. And this is why people will have to be very careful. These things are used as bait, as fishing bait. Now look, you can go to a shop and buy a bag of fishing bait. You don't have to go and kill one of these incredible looking animals for fishing bait. And so that message has to get out there because that is also putting pressure on it. So let's 
just say having a conversation with somebody who uses this stuff as fishing bait, just tell them, hey, you know, have you got grandchildren? Because this medical resource, unless they can synthesize a replacement by taking a horseshoe crab and using it as fish bait, you could be denying grandchildren something that they may need medically. Our resources on this planet are finite. They don't last forever. Apart from denying future generations access to possible medical advantages, I'd say just don't knock them off because they look cool. They are awesome. That's why I'd want to preserve something. You don't really need a reason. I know people have asked me, you know, what use is such and such animal? Well, what use are human beings really? And here's my finished picture of the horseshoe crab. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Check out some of the other videos and I'll be on my way. Till the next time, see you later.